uh, uh, MySQL database, could be Mongo, could be any sort of database, could be uh, HTTP requests to another microservice or something else dumb, I don't know. Post some pictures on the gram so other people know that we're more than friends. In this video, we're going to take a look at dependency injection in JavaScript using an HTTP server that has to connect to a database. There are many reasons that you might want to use dependency injection in an application, but my main focus here is on testability because in my next video, I'm going to show you how you can mock your database to test your HTTP server separately from your database. So let's take a look at a basic Express app that connects to a MySQL database. Here I've imported Express and MySQL. I'm creating an Express app and I'm connecting to a MySQL database. And then I have an endpoint here where someone can create a new user object by making a post request to slash users and providing a username and password. I'm going to create a new user in the database. The first thing I'm going to do is query the MySQL database to see if there's any existing user with that username, because then you can't create a new user, that username's already taken. If there is no user with that username, then I'll create another query where we insert the username and password into the database using the insert statement. Uh, and then I'll send the user ID back to the client. And if there were any errors with the database, I'll send a 500 status code back to the client. And this is missing a few things like username and password validation, password hashing, and we probably wouldn't send the user ID straight back to the client. Uh, but this is good for this example. And at the bottom of the file here, I'm exporting the HTTP server object from Express. And then I'm importing that into a server file so that the server can take care of listening on a specific port. And I covered a reason why you would do this in a previous video on testing an Express API using Jest and SuperTest. Uh, but this is also going to be a requirement for using dependency injection on my HTTP server. And really, it's just a simple concept. We're not binding the port actually in the app file. We're just binding it in a different file. So currently in my HTTP server, I've tightly coupled my MySQL queries and my database connection code to my HTTP server code. All of it is in the same file in the same function. And this isn't necessarily a terrible thing, but it can be nice to separate out the different parts of the application into different modules, files, classes, whatever. So in this case, if I were to remove all of the database specific code here and put it into a database file and leave all of the HTTP server specific code in this file, I would have a clean separation and it would be clear where the difference is between my HTTP server and my database code. And there can be a lot of benefits to this. If I have to refactor my SQL queries, I know I just go to my database file for that. If I have to refactor my HTTP code, I know I just have to go to my app file for that. And it can make it a little bit easier to read, a little bit easier to think about. But the main benefit that I want to focus on is the fact that if I wanted to then test my HTTP server code separately from my database, I would be able to mock the different parts of my application to test things independently. And you don't have to test your apps this way, but I find a huge benefit in being able to test each individual part of my app separately before I test everything together. And dependency injection is a really helpful tool to enable me to do that. So the first thing I need to do here is actually extract all of the database specific code from this file and just put it in a separate place in a separate file. So now all of my database specific code that has to deal with MySQL is all in this database.js file. This file has no idea that it's part of an HTTP server. It has no idea that Express exists in this application. It is only concerned with the parts of the app that connect directly to the MySQL database. So I've exposed two functions here. One will get a user given a username, and that's just a quick select statement. And another one to create a new user given a username and password. And this is just a simple insert statement. So all of the details about the database are completely hidden. There are just two functions exposed that other parts of the app can call. So in my app.js, I can import that database file. And then within my post request to create a new user, I can just call get user on the database and pass in the username. And the database will go to the database, check if there's any user there with that username and return that user if there is. So we can check for that here and send a 400 status if there is. 
Uh, and if there isn't, then we can call the create user function on the database and pass in a username and password. And app.js has no idea that it's a MySQL database. It is just some sort of data source for the app to use. This could be uh, a MySQL database, could be Mongo, could be any sort of database, could be uh, HTTP requests to another microservice or something else dumb, I don't know. But it has no idea. So it creates that really nice distinction between this part of my app and the other part of my app. And for large pieces of the application, like the HTTP server and the database, these are these are pretty big chunks of the app, it can be really nice to have those clear separations there. And you don't want to go too far and, and separate everything out this way. Sometimes you need some tight coupling just to make the code easier to write and read. Uh, but in this case, I think it's a really nice separation. So now that the database is separate from the app, the app is going out and it's grabbing the database file. It is fully aware that there is a database.js file and it has to go and get it. It is dependent on this file and it's going and getting it itself. Now this is fine, um, but it does mean that app.js is always gonna get the same database file. It's always gonna go grab this MySQL database file. And if I wanted to change which database it was gonna use, if I wanted to have a, a fake database for testing and a real database for production, that's going to be a little bit difficult because app is always grabbing this production ready database. So what I need is instead of app going and grabbing the database itself, I want to pass the database to app. So in my production app, like if I'm running it through server.js, I'll hand it the real database, the production ready database. But if I'm running my app through my automated tests, I could hand it a fake database and then I can test that in a different way that just isolates my test just to what's going on in the HTTP server. So like I said, I need, I need to hand app the thing it wants rather than app going out and grabbing the thing it wants. Um, and this is what dependency injection is. And to achieve this in a JavaScript app can be really easy, but at the same time, a, a little weird and a little confusing. But basically, if we just wrap all of this code in app.js inside of a function, then we can just pass database to app through its main function. And I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> So what I've done is taken all of the code within app.js and wrapped it just in a function that I'm exporting to the other parts of my app. And this function expects a single database argument to be passed to it. So as long as the correct database is passed to this function, app will be able to use it. So we take this import database out of here. And if I put it into my server file, then we can hand the database to app. And this is no longer importing app, it's actually importing a function. So I'm just gonna call this uh, make app because the function will actually create the new application for us. If we actually look at this, we can see it is creating the new express app. And before I was exporting app from this file, now I'm exporting a function. And because I still need app to be accessible to the other files, instead of exporting it, I'm just returning it at the end of a function. So the idea is other files will import this function, call the function, pass in a database, and then the return value of this function will be the thing that I actually want to export, which in this case is my app HTTP server object. Uh, so in my server, I'm going to rename this yeah, to make app. And then when I want to create my app, I just have to call the make app function. And make app is expecting a database object to be passed in as its only argument. So I just have to pass in the database. And that's really all there is to it. Instead of this file going out and getting the thing it needs itself, we're gonna wrap everything into a function so that we can just pass it the thing it needs. We can inject its dependency so that we can make decisions about what that thing is at different parts of our application. So like I said, in production, I'm gonna hand it the production database, but in my tests, I can now hand it just some sort of fake database just to run my tests a little bit easier. And now app literally has no idea about the database object. All we need to do is pass it an object that has a get user and a create user method. That's it, that is the agreement here. So yeah, I'm passing it a MySQL database that has a get user and a create user method, but I could just switch this out for a Mongo database file. And as long as server just hands in that object, that will still work. But really, as long as I'm handing in an object that has those two functions, so uh, get user, create user, so switching out this dependency for a different thing becomes incredibly easy. And like I said, there's many benefits to doing this, but one of the biggest ones is that it makes a specific type of testing called mocking really easy to do. So in my next video, I'm gonna cover how to test my server using a mock database. Post some pictures on the gram so other people know that we're more than friends.